Okay, in uh, regard to cryptography and the algorithms and the crypto systems, um, there is a division between um, stream ciphers and block ciphers. Most of cryptography is going to be using block ciphers. Block ciphers are um, easier, stronger, um, easier to figure out how strong they are, uh, various other um, reasons for them being preferred. Basically, you can do pretty much anything, including using block ciphers in a stream mode as stream ciphers. Um, it is more difficult to get stream ciphers right, and uh, therefore it's, it's more difficult to create them. Um, I, I know that a number of widely used stream ciphers have uh, uh, vulnerabilities in them. Um, uh, one of them you have to make sure that you throw away about the first 500 bits that it produces. Um, anyway, um, so why, why do we have stream ciphers? Well, we have stream ciphers to encrypt things like um, radio traffic, uh, audio traffic, telephone traffic, um, well, and even uh, video streams. So you have to make a uh, somewhat faster stream cipher to do that, but uh, anyways, um, but as I say, um, for a number of these applications, you can use uh, block ciphers in a stream mode, and so we'll talk more about the modes of, of block ciphers uh, a bit later. Um, stream ciphers, um, you're basically taking a stream of bits, um, you have to digitize your uh, radio or telephone traffic, which is mostly done anyways these days. And uh, then you, um, you know, XOR uh, with, the, um, uh, with the bits of the stream cipher. And, okay, XOR. Have we talked about XOR? Exclusive OR. Uh, if you... Uh, Exclusive or um, a uh, piece of data with a uh, one bit, uh, you know, and you have a zero, uh, that is true, so that becomes a one. Uh, if you exclusive or a one bit with a one bit, that's false, so uh, you get, you know. Um, it's, it's a very fast way, it's a gate-level way of uh, doing a form of encryption. So you've got um, a stream of bits that you generate, you have a stream of bits uh, that is your traffic, that is your signal, and, uh, you know, exclusive or um, is a, a quick way to make sure that you are uh, encrypting it and it's going to be difficult for somebody to figure out what you're saying. Now, um, the block ciphers, it's not bit for bit. Um, you work on blocks of data. Uh, you know, originally we talked about blocks of text, um, but uh, with the, the modern uh, block ciphers that were using software for, um, you do bit encryption, you swap bits, you uh, transpose, you substitute, uh, do all that thing in multiple rounds, and but you do it on a block of data, uh, blocks always of, of the same size. Uh, again, we are going to go uh, through um, some of the modes of block ciphers and, and uh, what you have to do to implement them to make them effective or more effective. Um, so, uh, when you are using uh, block ciphers, um, we, have, uh, we have the key, but we also tend to have an initialization vector that we use to 
uh, start out um, the the process, and and we process this along with our first block. Um, generally, because the the first block may be predictable in terms of the data it contains, so we want to uh, have an initialization vector uh, so that it uh, is not as uh, recoverable, predictable by an adversary. Um, the, the initialization vector is the same as uh, salt or nonce or challenge that we use in, in other areas, um, challenge in, in challenge response systems in access control, the uh, uh, salt in, when we um, do things like encrypting passwords. Um, so uh, it's just you know a, a random bit of data that, that makes our system a, a little bit stronger. Um, Oh, a few more, few more things uh, here. If you are doing um, compression uh, and encryption, make sure you do your compression first. Um, encrypted data um, tends to look as random as possible. When when we encrypt data, um, there shouldn't be patterns in it. There, you know, so it, it looks for any data. So it's. And, and that is hard to compress. So do your compression first if you are doing both on data. Um, with block ciphers, uh, uh, you you know get to a point where your um, uh, you know your last block may not fill a complete block of data. So um, we tend to do padding, and you probably should consider, you know, do you do that standard, or because it's standard, does that give the adversary a uh, means to attack your last block and, and try and figure out uh, what the key is. So um, consider how you are going to do uh, padding on uh, filling blocks. Um, exclusive or, um, as I say, it's, it's a, a logic um, system. It's, it's quite important to encryption, very widely used. Um, it's this, this gate level operation, so it's extremely fast. We use it in stream ciphers all the time. And uh, as you'll see when we get into the different modes of block ciphers, um, we, uh, we use it there as well. Uh, very handy tool for us. And the last thing, um, Random, as I, you know, random is so important to cryptography. It is, um, uh, you know, we want to make the stuff unpredictable. We want to uh, choose randomly keys from our our address space uh, so that we don't um, uh, provide somebody with a, a smaller address space that they know we choose from. Um, the <laughs> As, as they say, you know, the importance of random numbers is, is too important to be left to chance. And the, um, uh, it, it, is, it is vitally important. Um, so always make sure that as far as possible, anything that you do that requires random is random. And of course, it's not, um, it's not possible to write a random number generator. Uh, you cannot produce random numbers. The closest we can come is pseudo-random numbers. We should try and get as close to random as possible, but always remember that is not truly, truly random. Uh, you go for truly random, um, that takes extra work.